Hey guys, I'm CMA Supra, and welcome to another Company of Heroes video! Now this one's actually going to be a shorter one, especially compared to the last one. Last one was an hour and eight minutes long. This one is a total of 17 minutes just for the game part. The whole video is going to be longer than that, because obviously there's stuff before and after. But yeah, shorter video, and in this video I want to demonstrate the strategy I use as Panzer Elite when I'm going against a British player. And this is literally the strategy I use every single time unless I don't realize I'm fighting someone who's British and I like not a person from Britain but uh, some playing as the British I don't care what country I'm fighting the person from that doesn't really matter <laughs> um, uh, so yeah this is the strategy I use as Panzer Elite when I'm playing against the Brits and the strategy overall is basically just get scout cars and use them effectively and then also uh, if you're able to use the scout cars effectively, you'll be able to get a Panzer IV IST infantry support tank, and that'll annihilate any and all of his infantry. That's the basis of the strategy. There's more, there are more details than that, as you will see in this video, but that's the overall idea. And uh, so from the beginning of this video, we were chatting, he said he was playing as random and got Brits, and yeah, I stopped playing as the Brits, or not Brits, uh, random. A few weeks ago because I just got tired of getting Brits. I got like Brits five games in a row once. I was like, really? I don't want to keep playing the Brits. They're not as fun as the other three. And they really aren't. They're not as fun. That's So I've basically just stopped playing random. Now I actually pick which faction I want to play as. I did build the tier one building, which is the logistic company, and that's the first step of this strategy. So you, with your first Panzer Grenadier squad out of your HQ, you want to build the logistic company and uh, as it's building, you'll build another Panzer Grenadier squad because the building will build slower than you'll reach 255 manpower. So you'll have two Panzer Grenadier squads before you build your first scout car. Uh, once you are able to build your first scout car, you build the first one and then you build the second one. And you'll reach 220 manpower to build the second one before the first one's even out of the building and that's fine, you'll just have it queued up. And normally you're not supposed to queue units, it's a sign of a bad player, but in this case you kind of have to. <laughs> so the reason is just because it builds so slow. They actually nerfed scout cars, uh, I think in the first Opposing Fronts patch. I'm not really sure, but I think that's when it was, because in the Opposing Fronts beta and when it first came out, Panzer Elite was extremely overpowered, including scout cars. So they made scout cars take a really long time to build, and that was basically all they did. And look at my little micro here. I was so proud of what I did. I am I am pushing him with my kitten crowd, or my kitty. And it's actually working out quite well. It's a strategy lots of players use. I normally don't see it being used with the kid with the kitty <laughs> against the lieutenant. So I thought that was just a little funny thing, but anyways, um, so you'll have two Panzer Grenadier squads, two scout cars, and you don't want to have any more scout cars than two because they'll easily be outclassed later in the early game. So not like later in the game, but it's later in the early game, so pretty quickly they'll be outclassed. But early on, they are really strong, so you will want scout cars. They're also really good for capturing, which is what I'm using my first scout car for. It is capturing the munitions point next to my base, or diagonal from my base. And the second one just came out, I'm going to have it support my infantry because it is capable of fighting. Now I know some of you are thinking, oh, but scout cars suck, we don't want to use those. And that is true against Americans, not against the Brits. Against the Brits, they are actually really strong. A single scout car can take on a British infantry section and win. So for 220 manpower, you get a mobile firing platform that can beat a 450 manpower slow unit. They are worth getting. They just they just get outclassed pretty quickly, like I said, in the late early game. Which is why you only want two. And then after you build the two, you only want to keep building Panzer Grenadiers and reinforcing and all. Try your best not to lose your scout cars. It's not the end of the world if you do lose them. Uh, you can still win if you do enough damage with them before you lose them. But uh, try not to lose them. Here you can see me. I'm I'm trying to save this thing because there's a Bryn firing at it and it got buttoned. It will not defeat a Bryn squad. It won't defeat a... Uh, well, I guess Bryn squad is the only kind of infantry section it really can't defeat. It can defeat 
the recon squads, it can defeat the rifle grenade squads unless you have it on the other side of an, an object that can't be shot through, in which case they're just going to be lobbing grenades over at you while you just sit there and take damage. Obviously that's not what you want to do. So uh, the only recon section, not the recon section, infantry section that can beat a scout cart is the Bryn infantry section. And my opponent did go for Bryn, so that was really good for him. I don't I don't know. I don't think he noticed I had scout cars, but he wanted the Bryn early, and that works out fine. It's kind of my strategy, actually. I invented the strategy he's using, and now I'm using it against him. <laughs> uh, he's using a variation of my strategy. So, I just captured a plus five point. This scout car is screwed, so I was like, well, I'm going to make you chase it if you want to kill it, and... Even though it's not really, really doing any killing, it hasn't done much capturing, it captured a plus five munitions, which I'm not actually even getting any resources from. Uh, it's still being useful to me because he has to chase it in order to kill it. And if he has to chase it, that's time and, well, I guess mainly time, but also resources he's not using effectively. Because I can capture the rest of the map as he chases the scout car with one of his high manpower cost units. So he doesn't have very many units, because that's just how the Brits are, you don't get very many units in the early game. So if he decides to chase it, he's going to be losing a lot of map control. And that is kind of where this shines. Like, you can run away with your scout cars and uh, make him chase you. You can capture points really quickly with scout cars, because you'll have two scout cards, cars, not cards, and a kitty. So you'll have three capturing units as your Panzer Grenadiers do the fighting. Your scout cars can fight as well. Like I said, they can one-on-one -on -one handle a Tommy squad. Uh, not all the time. It's like maybe 60% of the time, so you still have to watch your scout cars in case they don't survive against the Tommy squad, which is the infantry section, by the way. And so you'll have to monitor them, but most of the time they will win, like 60% of the time, as I've said. So they're pretty good, and as you can see, I'm using it quite effectively. I'm making him chase my scout cars in order to uh, do any damage to me. I did manage to get most of the map as this fighting is going on, here we have a Bren squad firing at it again. Woohoo! <laughs> More damage. And those Bren squads, if if your British opponent can get them early, that's really good for him, not for you. Because he can pretty much disable a single scout car like that, and if he has other uh, infantry sections shooting at it, he can destroy it, as he is almost doing to this one. And he almost destroyed the other one as well, that's why I'm repairing it with three Panzer Grenadier squads. Because you don't want to lose them if you don't have to. Repairing is almost free. It has a little bit of manpower cost, but not really noticeable. I remember talking with someone either in the comments on YouTube in one of my videos, or on GameReplays.org. I don't know where it was. But I was talking with someone, and we were talking about the ma the manpower cost for repairing. I honestly don't remember the conversation anymore, but I do know that it is basically negligible cost. That's basically what we came up with. So, um, some of you might be thinking, what if your opponent goes with the Bryn carrier from his HQ truck? And my response would be, these things are better than Bryn carriers. These things will win against a Bryn carrier as well as against a Tommy squad. Not at the same time, obviously. Uh, but they will win against a Bryn Carrier if they're microed correctly. So like, spin around the Bryn Carrier, maybe send both of your scout cars to attack a Bryn Carrier at the same time. Because he has to spend munitions to fix his Bryn Carrier, it's free for you to fix your scout cars. So, Bryn Carriers are not really an issue. Now, as I was talking about the Bryn Carrier thing, you saw his Lieutenant Retreat. And that's another thing the scout cars are really good for against the Brits. And this is why I go for Tier 1 and scout cars when I'm playing against the Brits. Uh, they can, if you're fighting his infantry sections uh, anywhere on the map, you're, it's highly likely that his lieutenant will be somewhere in the group of infantry, infantry sections. So you can have one or both of your scout cars flank around and kill the lieutenant, which in fact it just died over there for my opponent, so yay, his, his, his lieutenant is dead. So that's another use for them. They can flank around, kill the lieutenant, which is probably going to be behind the fight. Obviously, he doesn't want it at the front line. So go around, kill the lieutenant, and you have significantly hurt him because he can no longer move fast in enemy territory. Or even neutral territory. So I really like scout cars. I know lots of you are going to try and come up with reasons not to have them, and I want to hear your reasons. I will counter them because I really like scout cars against the Brits and... 
If you have any ideas for why it might be a bad idea, let me know. I will do my best to counter it, or I'll agree with you, maybe, if it's right. And who knows? Depends on what your idea is, right? So here's an instance of where you don't want your scout cars alone. And yeah, that's where his Brins did really well against my scout cars. Did I just lose my kitty and a scout car? I might have. I think I lost two vehicles, but I might be wrong as well about that. So, after the scout cars and building a whole bunch of Panzer Grenadiers, the next thing you want to do is build the Tier 4 building, which I don't know the name of, but it's the one that builds AT half tracks and Panzer 4 ISTs. And the first unit you want to have out of there is the Panzer... F not the Panzer 4, the AT half track, because of the off chance that a, um, a fast steward is going to happen. Because it can happen. Uh, that used to be the main strategy the British players used. Now it seems like a lot of them are actually using my strategy. Makes me proud. <laughs> but, yeah, on the off chance that there is a fast steward coming, you want to have the AT half-track available. In this case, it didn't work out for me. I ended up just losing it right there because I was stupid with it and didn't um, pay attention to it as it was fighting. So I lost it, but that's not the end of the world, because now I have the Panzer IV IST. So while the AT half-track was on the field, I was able to get the Panzer IV IST. And if there is a fast Stuart, this thing will easily kill the Stuart. Stuarts can't win against this unless they're hitting your rear armor, so... Do micro it so your front armor's facing the Stuart. Because the Stuarts have a lot of trouble penetrating the front armor of this thing. So this will kill infantry and Stuarts, which is basically everything the Brits can have early on. Now something I did want to do before I started recording this commentary was calculate the cost for everything uh, in terms of manpower and fuel. But let's do fuel first, uh, as I'm commentating. So to get a Panzer IV IST, you need 60 plus 60. 60 for the upgrade, 60 for the thing itself. Uh, I believe it's 40 for the building, so that's uh, 160 plus 20 for your first building, which is Logistic Company in this case, so 180 fuel. A Stuart would cost 30 for the Tier 2 truck. Um, I actually don't know how much a Captain costs. I believe it's 30, which is a total of 60 fuel, plus the Stuart, which is 45 fuel. So that is 105 fuel, approximately. So 105 versus 180 fuel. Even if my numbers are wrong, those are approximately correct. So the Stuart can show up before the Panzer IV IST can show up. And that is why you want the AT half track. And once again, I have another AT half-track out, and you always want to have at least one AT half-track in case your opponent goes the Engineer Doctrine, the rightmost doctrine for Brits, and gets Churchills, because you have no counter for Churchills except for um, the AT half-track, and the Panzer IV is not going to go killing Churchills. It's an anti-infantry gun firing HE shells. It's not going to go piercing armor. So here you can see my opponent has Piots. If your opponent does get Piots against your Panzer IV, just put it in lockdown and shoot at the Piot squad. You will survive. I did go with Offensive Vet just to try it out this game, but I almost always go with Defensive Vet on the Panzer IV because it just makes it a brick. It is so hard to penetrate. And then if your opponent also buttons the Panzer IV, uh, you'll be able to survive longer because of the Defensive Vet. So always go defensive vet. I was just trying offensive vet in this game, so ignore the fact that I was trying offensive. As you can see, it's not working out too well because my uh, Panzer IV took quite a bit of damage with the offensive vet. So that really sucked for me. I do have to spend time repairing it now. But uh, as you saw, it just wiped out his entire base, more or less. It destroyed the HQ, destroyed the casualty clearing center. He only has a field support truck remaining, and... That, that's being shot at by my AT half-track because I don't want my Panzer IV shooting it because my, my Panzer IV needs repairing. Well, apparently I do want my Panzer IV shooting at it. Okay, I guess I'll just repair it later because I don't want to repair it while it's under machine gun fire. Oh yeah, I guess it's not. So you can use it to destroy buildings. Uh, you always want to try and destroy your opponent's trucks because they take a lot of time to build and... They cost a lot of manpower and sometimes fuel, depending on what truck it is. Ah, there's only three trucks, so the only one that doesn't cost fuel is the HQ truck. So for my third off for my third vet, I got offensive, just because I wanted to try offensive this game. Normally I'll have all three defensive. 
I just wanted to try out offensive this game, and I didn't notice a really big difference, if any at all. Uh, so I highly recommend defensive, because I can definitely notice a difference when I have defensive vet versus no vet. But offensive vet versus no vet, I can't notice a difference. I didn't notice one in this game. So uh, that's basically the strategy, is you want to use your scout cars effectively early in the game, and use the map control you have to quickly get tier 4 up, get an AT half track out to counter the possible Stuart. Because you can get an AT half track out before the Stuart. Like I said, uh, you can't get the Panzer IV IST out before the Stuart unless your opponent has fewer resources. But you can get the AT half track out before the Stuart because the AT half track is 15 for the thing itself, uh, 40 for the building, and 20 for your first tier building, which is Logistic Company. So that's 60, 75 fuel versus the 105 I calculated for the Stuart. So, uh, for fuel, it is definitely worth getting the AT half track just in case the steward shows up. Now, I did go ahead and buy in this game AT grenades, and I am glad I did. Uh, there's a Churchill that showed up. My opponent did go the right path. This is the appropriate counter to my strategy, is going for Churchills, because that's the only way you can kill this Panzer IV IST. But he was, he got tread broken before my AT half track died. And I happened to buy AT grenades because I had a strong feeling that Churchills were coming out. So like, let's buy AT grenades just in case. And look at what it, look at what happened. It was totally worth buying AT grenades. Uh, that Churchill is now stuck, and because of the tread breaking that my AT half track did, and it's highly damaged from all the AT grenades I threw. And I have tons of munitions just because of all the capping my scout cars did and all the territory I was able to protect with my Panzer IVs, as well as capture with my Panzer IVs. So that that Churchill is dead, and I retreat because I I threw all my AT grenades, I can't throw any more. He decides to quit because that Churchill is essentially useless for him. I killed his second HQ <laughs> that he bought because I found it and killed it with the Panzer IV. And basically, I think it's a really good strategy. This is just an example game. You can say my opponent did some things bad, that's fine, I did some things bad as well, like losing an AT half track, but overall it is a really good strategy that I use pretty much every time I'm playing as Panzer Elite against the Brits, because it's just really good, as you have seen. And I have a kitty, yay! Maybe I didn't lose it, I don't know. But um, anyways, all my opponent had left was the Churchill, that's literally all he had left, so he didn't have much of a chance. I had two Panzer IVs, some infantry, and a kitty. I don't know if I had any of my scout cars left, I think I lost both of them, so even if you lose both of them, uh, it still works out just fine, as you can see, as long as they are used effectively, such as luring your opponent so he can't fight you, or going and capturing points so you have three capturing units, stuff like that. Anyways, hope you all enjoyed the video, hope you found it informative, I hope you really did, because I think it's a really good strategy, you guys can start using it. And eventually the Brits will come up with a real good uh, counter to it, but that's not going to happen yet until this strategy becomes more mainstream. So I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye, guys. So I overall played pretty terribly in this game, and yet against a level 14 player, I held on really, really well, which is... I don't get it. That's why I want to show you this game. I truly do not get it.